Once your waveforming calibration is complete, you can start configuring waveforming. Go to the Fine Tuning menu, where you set your base management. If you have not yet turned base management on, do so now. Then switch to the Waveforming Settings tab. After setting waveforming to on, you need to tell the waveforming algorithm which subs are emitters at the front of the room and which ones are absorbers at the back of the room. Note that the order of the subs in this list matches the order in the 3D view. If you don't remember which subs are which, you can use the pink noise in the 3D view to identify them, so you know which are in the front and which are in the back of the room. The waveforming settings page in the base management section of the GUI gives you five possible settings for the decay control strength. These settings are fairly self-explanatory. Maximum decay control tends to make for dry acoustics, while a minimum setting allows a bit more of the room's natural reverberation to be involved. This is a matter of personal preference more than anything, but in our experience, high and max are usually the preferred settings. You may prefer one setting when watching movies, and another when listening to music. You can change the settings by selecting the one you want from the pop-up menu and clicking Apply. The optimizer will then recalculate what is required to implement your selection. You can then experiment with different combinations of settings by making copies of the first presets. We suggest saving copies of these modified first waveforming presets and naming them accordingly, something like WF High or WF Low. Saving the results into different presets allows you to compare the results quickly and easily, so you can decide what works best for you. If you open the advanced section by clicking on the plus sign, you can access some additional settings that allow further customization. Some of the dynamic behavior of the filters in waveforming can be complex and quite strong. The waveforming limiter can reduce how aggressive those filters are, avoiding overcorrection. Higher settings will keep things simpler. And remember that more complex isn't always better. Pressurization mode takes advantage of the fact that there are no standing waves in the room below a certain frequency determined by the room's longest dimension. Below this frequency, subs can only pressurize the room, giving you that all-body, tactile, bass liver shiver experience that people love. Waveforming systems often have more subs than most, and pressurization mode takes advantage of this fact as it changes the behavior of the rear subs below that lowest frequency standing wave. Since we do not need to absorb energy to eliminate standing waves at these lowest frequencies, we can use those subs to help the front subwoofers pressurize the room. In a solidly built and sealed room, this can provide an extra 10 dB of output in the infrasonic region. If your subs are up for the challenge, it can be a lot of fun. The pressurization mode frequency is the frequency below which this behavior changes. We populate it with a reasonable and conservative value based on the front to rear wall distance value above, but you can experiment with different values if you wish. Remember that you will have to apply the changes first before you can experience their effect. Finally, Correction regulation allows waveforming to focus on the most significant part of the signal. Depending on the room and the system, it may improve the measured performance and or the headroom of the system. If you forget any of this, remember that we have a contextual help system. It's like having the appropriate section of the owner's manual available right on each page. You can access it by clicking the little blue info button on the right side of the screen, it will then expand to give you a quick explanation of the features found on that page. You should open up the excursion curve to allow these strong filters below 200 Hz. To achieve this, go to the Gears menu, Main tab of Optimizer Settings, Sub-Tab Settings, and finally the Sub-Sub-Tab of Excursion Curve. The green area represents what the optimizer may do here in terms of EQ. By default, we link all the speakers except the subs. In this case, we want the opposite. The Link All But Subs button is a toggle, so click it to unlink the main speakers. Then use the Next button at the bottom to move through the main speakers to the subs at the end of the list. Link them together using the Link button to apply the next step to all subs. Then click the Add Point Mode button and add a couple of control points at or around 200 Hz on the upper limit, the border between the green and red areas. 
Choosing exact frequencies doesn't matter here, since you can move these points around in the next step. Then return to the move point mode by clicking that button and move the points to open up the excursion curve to plus and 20 dB below about 200 Hz. This doesn't mean the system will do so. It just gives permission for it to do so if required.